Welcome to the channel. My name is Ashish and I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. I'm just back from a long 12.5 hour shift in the A&E and I decided on making this video so that this content can reach to you as soon as possible. If you want to support my work on YouTube, click on that like button, click on the subscribe button and share this video as much as possible with your friends and colleagues. Let's start this video. First of all, what is ALS? So ALS is Advanced Life Support Course. This is one of the course which is organized by Rhesus Council UK. And this is a course which is organized throughout the year in various hospitals and other private training centers across the country. Why is ALS important? The first reason is that ALS focuses on delivery of adult CPR, recognition and management of deteriorating patients and working in a team during emergency situations. The second reason is that it is essential to complete ALS certification to apply for a training job in the UK. So if you want to go into postgraduate training in the UK, you must have ALS certification. It is essential for all foundation doctors in the UK to complete ALS before starting on further training. In terms of the course structure, the ALS can be a two day course in which you will have two days of teaching and practice followed by an assessment of skills after which you will be given the certificate of completion of ALS. The second one in terms of structure can be EALS which is a one day course. In this you will have to complete online modules and you will have just one day of teaching and practice followed by assessment of skills on the same day and if you pass you will be given the ALS certificate. When you go for the course, the course will focus on the following eight points and you'll have to have a good grasp on these points so that you can get the ALS certification. The focuses include monitoring sick patients, recognizing signs of patient deterioration, calling for help at the right time, delivering effective CPR and defibrillation, post resuscitation care of patients, recognizing and treating arrhythmias, guidance on reading ABGs on further management of patients and non-technical and other communication skills which are required in resuscitation scenarios. So try to focus on these points and you will be able to do good in the ALS assessment. In summary, this is the flowchart and the algorithm which you'll have to consider when you're going for adult advanced life support. And this is the algorithm which you'll be taught in detail in the ALS course. Let's go further. Let's talk about the frequently asked question. The first one of them is how to book ALS course. First of all, you should book the ALS provider course and remember that there is a separate course for ALS instructor. So go for the ALS provider course. Second one, you don't need ILS which is immediate life support to book an ALS course and you can go for advanced life support course directly. Click on the link in the video description and it will direct you to the page where you can book this ALS course. You need to choose a center of your convenience and you need to email to them that you're interested in attending that course. You'll get a reply from them regarding the course and the course fees and the availability in due time. You can also ask your hospital if they have an ALS course coming soon and you might get lucky and you might get a place in one of those courses. The next question is when should you book your ALS course? So remember that ALS courses are in high demand because all doctors need to do this before going into a training post. So it can be a bit difficult to find one. So prepare and book early and by early I mean four to five months earlier to the course date and you will be fine. The next question is, is ALS conducted overseas? And the answer to this is yes, ALS is conducted overseas, but this is not the same as ACLS. So remember that. Check the Research Council UK website and you will be able to find how to book an ALS overseas. The next question is, how much does an ALS course cost? So the cost can vary from 400 to 700 pounds and usually the one day course is cheaper. The next question is, which course should you choose? Should you go for the one day EALS course or should you go for the two day course? I personally advise going for the two day course because you need to be really well prepared for the ALS assessment because a lot of people struggle in the 
assessment and a lot of people end up failing. So go for the two day course because it will give you plenty of reading time. Uh, they have really good teaching sessions and you will get a lot of time to practice so that you can just clear the ALS final assessment in one go. The next question is what happens after you book your ALS? So when you book your ALS, you will get uh, the ALS manual delivered to your place four weeks before your course. And this manual is your guide for the course and you need to read it really well and be prepared before you go for the actual course teachings. You also need to complete some online modules um, and you also need to complete a pre-course MCQ for which this course don't matter. It's just to compare how you did in the pre-course MCQs and how you did in the post-course MCQs so that you can get an idea about how this course improved your skills. Next question is what happens in the ALS assessment? So when you go through this course and you go through all the course material and the uh, uh, teachings and the lectures, you have to go for an assessment to finally get a certificate of ALS. And this assessment consists of the post core MCQs and the passing marks for this post course MCQs are more than or equal to 75%. And the second assessment is a cardiac arrest stimulation. And this is a practical part where you are asked to deal with a cardiac arrest and lead the medical emergency team. And you are allowed two attempts to go for this cardiac arrest simulation. You need to pass in both of the parts to get the ALS provider status and certification. What happens if you fail in the post course MCQ test? So if you fail in that, you are given a chance to repeat the test again within three months of the course on a later date. The next question is what happens if you fail in both attempts of the cardiac arrest simulation? If you fail in that, you will be given a chance to repeat the test again within three months of the course date on a later date. What happens if you fail in both parts of the assessment? So if you fail in both parts, you will have to unfortunately rebook and repeat the course again with the same or a different instructor. Let's talk about my personal experience with the ALS. So I booked a two day course and the center of the course was in London. I passed my ALS in the first go in the cardiac arrest simulation assessment and I scored 89% in the post course MCQs. When I went for this course, I was really well prepared because I read whole of the ALS manual thoroughly and I had paid a lot of attention to all of the lectures which were a part of this course. And by the end of the course lectures, I was fairly confident that I will pass it. So in my scenario, there was a lady who has had a recent surgery uh, and uh, it was an orthopedic surgery and now she was complaining of some chest pain and she was short of breath and she felt confused. So I did a full ABCDA assessment for the lady and identified that she could be having a PE, which is pulmonary embolism. Uh, the scenario changed when the lady became non-responsive and had a cardiac arrest. So I had to lead a whole of the cardiac arrest scenario and I successfully revived her and uh, when I started commenting on the post resuscitation management, the examiner stopped me and they said that I had passed the, uh, the cardiac arrest simulation scenario. So that was whole of my experience with this. After going through my ALS and passing the ALS in the first attempt, I have a few recommendations for you. The first one is to read the ALS manual completely and thoroughly and mark the important points so that you can read them and revise them before the assessment. The second one is not to take the cardiac arrest simulation scenario lightly as it is easy to fail in them. I've had a lot of candidates in the same assessment in which I went for. So a lot of people didn't pass in this cardiac arrest simulation scenario because they just made some minor mistakes like not checking the pearls before going for the CPR or not um, instructing the other team members of the medical emergency team well. So it is easy to fail in this scenario. So be focused and uh, be well prepared for the simulation scenario. The next one is focus well on the lectures and clear all your doubts before going for the assessment. The fourth one is to practice the scenario sincerely and help others who don't do well. In this way, you'll learn more. The final recommendation is to 
be not afraid to get up and go for a demo scenario when you're asked to volunteer and i personally volunteered for almost all the practice uh, scenes and i was the first person to raise my hand when they asked uh, to come up as a volunteer and do the demo scenario so don't be afraid and practice as much as possible and that's my fifth recommendation so that is all for this video i hope that you were able to get an idea about how als training works in the uk if you have any further queries you can always comment in the comment section for this video and i'll try to answer them for you i will see you soon in another such video thanks a lot for watching if you want to support my work please click on the like button click on the share button and click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss any updates thanks a lot for watching this video again i'll see you soon